Hey everyone, Michael Longa here from the HR McMillan Space Center, and we're back again with uh, Morgan Alford from Let's Talk Science. And uh, this is our second week of our weekly features, all on a theme. And Morgan's got an activity for us this week on the theme of gravity. How's it going, Morgan? Good, how are you? I'm not bad. Um, so, how did you do uh, with the, this week's activity? This week is a lot of fun. Um, it's very grassroots weighing scale coming at you. Um, you can make it out of basically anything, and we're talking all about mass and weight and the difference between them and how they're related to gravity. Um, and we're voguing apparently as well. Uh, <laughs> so yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, gravity is a complex subject, and it's something that you know. There's a big range of understanding, um, even from an like elementary school level up to like a secondary school level. How did you uh, find your uh, understanding of the subject as you went into developing this activity? Um, yeah, it was definitely a good check your understanding for me. It brought me back to being in first year of university, even so, going beyond secondary school. Um, and I was reminded of all the different things that can influence gravitational forces or other forces that oppose gravitational forces. Um, so for instance, things like air resistance influence gravity. Um, mm -hmm. How far you are from the surface of a body or whatever thing you are being gravitationally pulled towards influences the pull on you. Um, and so yeah, it becomes very complex very fast. Yeah, I like thinking about the stories of Galileo, like when he was coming up with his experiments and dropping the two weights from the top of the Tower of Pisa and then having all those naysayers, you know, like, well, what if you dropped a feather, uh, you know, and then because they didn't understand air resistance back then, you know, these pure experiments that I hope uh, kids at home, they're watching this, they're trying some of these things out. But of course, if you've got a heavy object like a hammer, you know, make sure you've got some parents around. You don't want to be dropping hammers uh, on your foot uh, with these experiments. Um, do you, did you have any questions as you were delving into the subject, Morgan? Uh, definitely. So I started wondering a lot about how um, gravity on Earth is different from gravity in space mm -hmm. and maybe how things that we experience in space, like the G-force, is related to gravity here on Earth. Yeah. Um, so maybe you can speak a little bit about that with your expertise. Well, so... Leaving the Earth is not a simple thing. <laughs> if it was, we'd just be floating around, right? Like you jump up, gravity pulls you back down. There's a very simple intuitive nature about it. Um, but you know, back in the 1940s and 50s when they were developing rockets, um, they had to basically create the most powerful force that we'd ever created to create what we call exit velocity in order to leave the earth. Uh, and that wasn't a simple thing. And it certainly wasn't a simple and safe thing, you know, to put humans on top of basically a giant bomb. You know, I've got a picture of a rocket back here, um, the Saturn V rockets, and certainly it wasn't safe, but that was the goal. They wanted to try to get people up into space safely. So, you know, astronauts had to undergo training because what we experience here on earth is what we call 1G, one uh, unit of gravity force on us. And we're pretty used to that. Now, you have perhaps experienced a, a little bit of it when if you, were to, if you dive down deep into a pool and you start to feel some, some more forces around you, the deeper and deeper you go. Um, and of course, you know, if you're in the ocean, there's a certain uh, point when you need to have protection, you need to have like actual scuba gear uh, protecting you as you go further down because that force would actually start to push on you. And that's what happens to astronauts as well. As they're going up, there is more gravitational force being forced on them. And they have to go through, you know, simulators and training um, so that they can get used to it. Now, there is a, a certain amount of time that you, uh, um, yeah, that basically is the maximum amount of time that you could have that much force on you. Um, but astronauts train for that. But then once you get out into space, you know, and the, um, the, the rocket is not at, at its exit velocity anymore, 
But then um, what you see when you see astronauts floating around in the International Space Station, they're in what's called free fall. Um, so that it's kind of like, you know, if you were in an elevator and the elevator just started to drop, you would float in the middle of the elevator. Now, thank goodness that doesn't happen very often. Um, and as it's falling, you're kind of safe. You're just floating there in the middle of the elevator. What would, but the problem is, is if that elevator landed on the ground, then that would be the problem. But for the International Space Station, it just keeps going around and around the earth at the same speed. And as long as the International Space Station is traveling at that speed, it's safe. And the astronauts that are inside that space station are just floating around. Uh, there's no gravity in space. Oh, there's, there is lots of gravity in space. It's all uh, relative to how close they are. So the, um, the gravity of the Earth keeps the uh, International Space Station close by. Uh, if, the, if that exit velocity of the International Space Station was too much, then it would just keep on going uh, and it would eventually come across the next body that it might encounter, which might be the moon. But of course, the moon is a lot smaller than the Earth. So you'd have to really get some good exit velocity to leave the Earth in order to make it to the moon. So that's why the rockets that we're sending um, to the moon and to Mars have to be the most powerful ones that we've ever created. And so the exit velocity for something that we want to send up into orbit around Earth, do you mm -hmm. know what that is? Um, yeah, it's about 11 kilometers a second, if you can imagine how fast that is. That is about, um, so think about um, a bullet out of a rifle. That's about just under two kilometers a second. So we're talking almost 11 kilometers a second to leave the Earth. It's pretty fast. <laughs> I still can't imagine it because I can't even see a bullet when it leaves a rifle. So I am surprised, I guess, because of the sheer size of rockets, we see them still when they achieve that velocity. But that's crazy. It's so fast. So is, is this inspiring you to uh, perhaps get on a rocket and, uh, and leave yeah. Earth? Well, actually, so back to the G-force thing. I had this friend who studied in London, and he was studying space physiology. So how all these different forces influence uh, the bodily processes of astronauts and other people who are up in space. Mm -hmm. um, and so they were having samples sent back to them from astronauts on the International Space Station and comparing those to people who went and experienced different levels of the G-force at mm -hmm. a human centrifuge in Germany um, and seeing if the results that we were getting from our studies in Germany were actually comparable to the studies um, being conducted up in space. And so perhaps, I will submit an application to go into this human centrifuge. Awesome. Yeah, I would, I've always wanted to go, even though I have, I'm a chronic nosebleeder and I know like that I'll probably just like sit down and I start nosebleeding. So <laughs> even though I want to, I don't know if my body wants to. If anybody is interested in checking out what this human centrifuge does to you, please Google human centrifuge. All right. Or um, so let's get to our activity this week. It's a really simple uh, gravity experiment. And of course, we hope that uh, you all at home are enjoying these videos. We're going to be having uh, a new video every week. Uh, so let's get to uh, this week's activity. Enjoy. Hello, everybody. Thanks for tuning in again with us for another week of the H.R. McMillan Space Center at home. Um, this week we're learning about one of the, arguably the most important forces, um, and that is the force of gravity. So what is gravity? I'm glad you asked. Um, gravity is a force that applies to any object with mass. Now mass is a property that is characteristic of some sort of object. I've got mass you've got mass, and some people confuse their mass with their weight. So, mass is related to weight through the force of gravity. You are pretty familiar with your weight. I'm sure you have a scale in your bathroom where maybe before you take a shower in the morning, you jump on and you see how much you weigh. And this is usually a value expressed to you in pounds or kilograms. And this value comes from your mass, um, times or multiplied by the force of gravity acting on you that is drawing you down into the scale. Um, and this gives you a very specific value 
that we refer to in pounds or kilograms. We are going to be exploring uh, the weight or mass of different objects today, different household items, by constructing one of our very own weighing balances. So a weighing balance is different from a weighing scale because we are balancing two objects and looking at their weight relative to each other. So we're not getting an actual value like we do from our bathroom scale in terms of kilograms or pounds, but we are able to determine how things measure up to one another, bringing us kind of back to our discussions about relative sizes and distances that we had last week when talking about our solar system and our place in the universe. Um, this activity will really put into perspective our weight relative to other things and further define our place. Without further ado, let's get right into it. The first thing we need to do before we get building our weighing balance today is collecting all of the materials that we're going to use to build the weighing balance. So what I've got here are some kitchen scissors that we're going to use for uh, cutting some strings uh, to hang our weighing boats from their contraption. We've also got some potting plant or pots for plants <laughs> um, that we are going to use as our weighing boats. You can also use other things such as any plastic cups or styrofoam cups if you have them at your house, um, some plastic Tupperwares that you're willing to damage a little bit, pierce some holes into, um, potting plants or plants for pots, I can't say that are great because they've already got holes in the bottom of them. So we don't actually have to do any damage. We don't have to pierce um, our weighing boats at all. Uh, you're going to need some sort of contraption to hang your weighing balance from. Once it is built, we are using a clothes hanger in this case. Um, you need some kitchen string in order to cut uh, the the hanging pieces by which you will attach your weighing boat to the hanging contraption. And finally, some tape just to really uh, keep everything together very well and tighten up some spots where your strings that connect your weighing boat to the hanging contraption might be kind of lack, um, which we will see more in a few minutes. So first things first, you're going to take your string your kitchen string, and measure out something about the length of your forearm. Um, and then just cut the string to your desired length. And repeat this uh, three to four times, depending on how many pieces of string you need in order to hang your weighing boat um, evenly from the hanging contraption. In my case, I'm going to be cutting four strings per boat um, because it's got four holes in the what would be corners of the pot if it wasn't a circle um, and yours might be different if you're using a plastic Tupperware you can just take your scissors and pierce your weighing boat twice once on either side of the rim um, same for plastic cups and then you only need two pieces of string per boat so that number is going to vary a little bit depending on what you're using for supplies, which again depends completely on what you have in your house. We want to reiterate that you should aim to use things already available to you in your homes. We don't want you guys going up to the stores unnecessarily. And as well, if you're under the age of 13, again, super important, please have some parents supervising or parental consent to be crafting along with us today. So here I've got some more string that I've pre-prepared, I'm going to cut it all to the same length. So what I'm going to do is just take my strings, line them up to one another, and make that cut. It's really important for these strings to be even length because that will help keep our weighing boats um, balanced once they're hanging from the contraption and keeping everything even. So I'll repeat this. And now I've got all the strings that I need. Now that we've got all of our strings prepared, we're going to take our weighing boat and depending on how you've made the holes or you've picked a supply with holes already made in them, um, it's going to affect how you attach your strings to the weighing boat. So because I've got really nice big holes already made in my potted plant, rather than trying to tie a knot to secure the string into place, 
I'm simply going to take the, the string, loop it through one of the holes, and then take a piece of my tape and fasten it to the bottom with tape. And so now I've got a nice firm connection made. I'm going to repeat that four times because I've got four really good holes um, and I think that using four strings will balance my weighing boat on its contraption the best. strings attached to my weighing boat and I want to connect these strings together in such a way that they will hold up the weighing boat evenly when attached to the hanging contraption. So what I'm going to do is now take my hanging contraption, my clothes hanger, and I'm going to tie my strings to the little hook that is given on the coat hanger. Alternatively, what I could do is take all of my strings and pull them tight so that I know um, where they've got to be secured to one another in order for all of the strings to be uh, felt fairly tense once hung from the contraption. And I could tie them together here just by forming one large knot. Now that I've got my knot secure, I can hang this from the clothes hanger and repeat the process for the other side. Once you've gotten both of your weighing boats built, um, attached to their strings and attached to the uh, clothes hanger, um, then you'll have a product that looks something like this. And hanging it from either a curtain rod or a supervisory adult's finger will allow you to put items into the weighing boats and see their relative weight to one another. So, for instance, let's say I wanted to weigh my ball of kitchen string relative to my tape. I would put the ball of string in one of my weighing boats, which weighs down that side of the scale, and I would put my kitchen tape into the other weighing boat which somewhat evens out the, the displacement of the coat hanger to the side of the kitchen string. But because the kitchen string is um, still more weighed down, um, more thrown off the center than the boat holding the kitchen tape, we know that the ball of string relative to the kitchen tape weighs more. It's got greater mass. And so the force of gravity is pulling it towards the earth more then the force of gravity is pulling the kitchen tape to the earth. If you're a super nerd like me, you are going to want to turn this into a proper science experiment. So what you can do is take out your lab notebook, a fresh sheet of paper, and your pen, and you can make a table like that given in the PDF Instructables attached to this video, um, and you can record which of two items you think will weigh more depending on the household materials that you've collected to test today. So let's say I want to weigh this box of jello as part of my um, series of household items. Um, I would say that jello is probably less heavy than the kitchen string. which was more heavy than the tape. So, perhaps the jello is more heavy than the tape as well, but still less heavy than the kitchen string, which would lead me to form a hierarchy of weight with the kitchen string being the heaviest, the box of jello being the second heaviest, and the tape being the least heavy of the three of my items. And then into my table, I can record my results of my experiment once I actually perform it. So I can weigh these three things in a series of pairwise um, 
samples. So the tape with the jello, the tape with the string, the jello with the string, and then I can determine if my predicted hierarchy of weight is correct. Now the results of our experiment did in fact show that the ball of string was the heaviest object followed by the kitchen tape and the jello was the least heavy object of the three. So like I said, we can validate our results and how we're going to do that is using our kitchen scale here. Uh, the values will be backwards for you, but I will read them out to you as we determine. Starting with the lightest object, supposedly the box of jello. Throw it on there. 23 grams. Okay. And now the next heavy object that we determined by using our weighing balance was the kitchen tape. 31 grams. So it is in fact heavier, about 8 grams heavier than the box of jello. But that was hard to determine using the weighing boat which is quite interesting. So that kind of indicates to the sensitivity of the weighing balance. And finally, the kitchen string, 72 grams, more than double uh, the weight of the tape. So again, the weighing balance, while not very sensitive, an incredible tool that we can use to determine relative weights of objects to one another. Now remember, our ability to weigh things using balances and scales depends on the force of gravity, which is what this week's theme is all about. Our Earth has an immense force of gravity because gravity depends on the mass of the object between which the force is acting. So for us here on Earth, the mass of the Earth relative to the mass of us, way bigger, has a great uh, gravitational pull on us, and we also have a gravitational pull on it. But because we are so much smaller than the Earth in terms of mass, our gravitational pull on this planet is relatively weak. Because other planets are smaller than our planet Earth, such as Mars, the amount of gravity that they exert on objects is less, so objects weigh less on that planet. Um, if we had an object here on Earth that weighed about 200 pounds and we took it out to Mars, it would only weigh about 76 pounds there. Black holes pack so much mass and light into such a small space that we, we observe some of the strongest forces of gravity um, that is known to mankind in these areas and it prevents anything, even light, from escaping them, which is why they are a black hole. If I haven't already convinced you that gravity is one of the coolest things known to mankind, maybe doing the experiment yourself will. So please go ahead, craft your own weighing balance, um, test out some stuff in your house, and let us know in the comments uh, what you end up testing and what you find.